It hasn't even quite been two weeks since the shooting at Oxford High School. Two weeks since we lost Madison Baldwin, Hannah St. Juliana, Justin Schilling, and Tate Meir. Classes won't be held at Oxford again until after the new year. It's still all very fresh, very raw. The prosecution of the suspect and the parents, of course, has a long way to go. And last week, in fact, I've said this many times, I mentioned that if we couldn't muster change in solutions after what happened at Sandy Hook, I wasn't really sure that change is possible. Well, oddly enough, the counter argument to that comes from a parent who lost a child at Sandy Hook. After losing her son, Jesse, Scarlett Lewis created the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Foundation, and I'm so glad that Scarlett Lewis is with me this morning. Scarlett, you are, of course, one of the unfortunate few who have a real sense of what these Oxford families are going through. Absolutely, I know exactly where they are now. My six-year-old son, Jesse McCord Lewis, was murdered in his first grade classroom alongside 19 of his classmates and six educators. And, uh, you know, right now they're in shock and not believing that something like this can happen yeah. and trying to figure out if and how they're going to survive. Because there, there, of course, is no, uh, there, there is no return to normal. There is, just like you've had, a completely new life, a different life than the one you expected. There is no returning to normal. This changes everything. In fact, after Jesse's murder, I realized that I had to be part of the solution. I, I also knew that every school shooting is preventable. Sandy Hook was preventable. Parkland was preventable. Michigan was preventable. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there have been 350 school shootings since Sandy Hook, 28 this year alone, and they're all preventable. But I, I often use, as I said earlier, I, I sort of use Sandy Hook as a, a metaphor for futility. If we couldn't do it then, given the, what happened at Sandy Hook, why do you hold promise that we can turn the corner, we, that we can find a way forward now? I think it's really important that we shift our focus. We have been focusing on the reactive end of the pathway to violence. Um, that is the attack end. We've been hardening schools after every shooting. We've been changing our strategy. And I think it's time now, and what I've been focused on for the past nine years since the Sandy Hook shooting, is focusing on the, the grievance end of the pathway to violence. And, and that is a school's culture. It is uh, going in and it is focusing on children's mental health and well being, giving them skills and tools so that they can manage difficulty and challenges and roadblocks in their lives. And, and ultimately, that grievance, should it happen before it escalates into an attack. You know, what we've been doing now is, is reacting after each shooting, and we find ourselves always being behind the eight ball. What yeah. we need to do is start being proactive. And a part of that, you, you've, you're, you, you've got a new book uh, called From Sandy Hook to the World, How the Choose Love Movement Transforms Lives. And one of the key components that you are turning to is something known as SEL. Explain social emotional learning. So these are essential life skills. They're learning how to have healthy relationships and meaningful connections. They're learning how to manage our emotions, how to face, move through, grow through, be strengthened by difficulty in our lives, how to make responsible decisions, all of these skills and tools that we're actually not born with, that we have to learn. And so, yes, we learn them at home, but we're seeing now that they absolutely must be reinforced and practiced at school. And I will say, uh, after I quit my job after Sandy Hook and dedicated my life to being part of the solution and came upon these essential life skills, I realized as an adult that I didn't have all of these. And so I can tell you 
that I've learned them, uh, a lot of them, as an adult helping uh, create the Choose Love programming. And my life is exponentially better. These are, these are really important skills and tools. We know that they are the pathway to flourishing. We know that our kids are being subjected to a lot of issues today, more than ever before, right. especially with social media. We know that kids, by the time they graduate from elementary school, they will have seen 8,000 violent killings. And uh, by the time they're 18, over 200,000 acts of violence. And, and the study that I'm talking about was done in uh, 1998. I can't even imagine what the numbers are now. Oh, exactly. And if we're going to allow our kids to be subjected to everything that they are, we really need to give them uh, also the coping mechanisms that they're going to need to be able to handle all of this. But the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, though, was how you were able to make the turn as early as you did to seeing this in a new way. Um, we, of course, we, all four funerals for the victims here were held this past week. At Jesse's funeral, you, you spoke about choosing love. As long as you're angry or uh, if you've got hate in your heart, then as Nelson Mandela sort of explained, someone else is in charge of your life. You somehow uh, seem to understand from almost the drop that, uh, that you needed to, to uh, look at this a different way. How would you advise parents right now who are hurting in such a, a, a horrendous way to, to choose something other than anger or hate? How did you do it? Well, it's a different path for everyone. My six-year-old son actually left a message yes. on our kitchen chalkboard before he died. He wrote three words, nurturing, healing, love. They were phonetically spelled, but the meaning was clear. <laughs> I, knew, I knew if the shooter had been able to give and receive nurturing, healing love. The tragedy would never have happened. These kids actually aren't born mass murderers. They are cultivated into what they become through difficulty and challenges and roadblocks that they don't have the skills and tools to manage. And so I just decided that I did not want to become another victim. I had you know an, an older son jesse's older brother and i wanted to be a role model for him on how to learn from this how to grow through this how to actually even be strengthened by this and then to take the wisdom that we've learned and use it to help other people and so in this kind of conscious modeling that I've done, it's really kind of helped me rise to the occasion and, uh, and, and hopefully be part of the solution. I feel like um, it's, it's, it's time now, enough is enough. We can prevent school shootings, but it's gonna take everybody really listening to what our kids are telling us. Our kids are hurting and they need our help. Uh, so many times they actually talk about what they're going to do and uh, we need to listen to them yep. and we need to be giving them what they need and, and teaching them how to manage these difficult emotions that they have. Uh, what we've been doing isn't working, so we're going to have to shift the way that we've been looking at this issue and start focusing on proactive prevention. Well, and I know a lot of people are listening and hearing you. Your, your grace and commitment have been extraordinary in this. I'm so glad you spent some time with us today. Thank you so much, Scarlett. Thank you.